Hi everybody, I wanted to hopefully clear up some confusion on the function of photoreceptors and phototransduction. So a quick reminder, we are looking at uh, photopigments or visual pigments and uh, this consists of, in rods, we have retinal and opsin, which is the protein aspect. And rest, retinal is going to be responsible for absorbing that wavelength of light. And as you can see here, it's a part of a redox reaction. Vitamin A is oxidized to become cis-retinal. Cis-retinal is the inactive form. When retinal absorbs light, it becomes trans-retinal, and you can see the conformational change in its structure right here. You see this straight uh, line of this carbon chain right here. That's trans-retinal in the light compared to cis-retinal has this bent tail here in the dark. So when retinal absorbs light, it takes on this conformation. And remember that retinal can go back to its cis conformation and it can rejoin with its opsin, opsin, but it is going to have to happen in the dark. Okay, so this picture on the left is showing your rhodopsin right here. You can see retinal is in its cis conformation right here. Uh, so no light is being absorbed. G protein system. This has not been an. This has not been activated, and you can see over here this sodium ion channel is open. It's being held open by cyclic GMP. So during the dark, this sodium ion channel is open. Sodium comes into this photoreceptor, this rod. In the light, moving over to this picture on the right, you're going to bleach rhodopsin. So light will be absorbed by retinal, and you can see in this tiny little retinal figure it is in its trans conformation. It has that straight line right there. When retinal absorbs that light, it's going to activate this G protein system. So you can see here this purple splotch. This is your G protein. It's become activated. It uses GTP. In this receptor system, G protein's job is to activate phosphodiesterase. The job of phosphodiesterase is to break down, oops, sorry, the job of phosphodiesterase is to break down cyclic GMP. Remember, cyclic GMP was holding open that sodium ion channel. Since cyclic GMP is broken down, that ion channel closes, and no more sodium is allowed into that rod, into the photoreceptor. So during the light, this ion channel closes. No sodium is allowed in. During the dark, sodium is allowed in. And remember from when we talked about the nervous system, when sodium rushes into a cell, this causes depolarization. And so here, this picture on the left in the dark, this photoreceptor is undergoing depolarization. This photoreceptor on the right in the light is undergoing hyperpolarization. So let's zoom out a little bit. We're still going to compare um, dark and light. So here in the dark, remember your sodium channels are being held open by cyclic GMP. Retinal is in its regular cis conformation. There's no light being absorbed. So in the dark, sodium is coming into your rod and it's causing depolarization of your rod. Depolarization is going to allow your voltage-gated calcium channels to open, and just like when we have seen any other voltage-gated calcium channels, it is going to cause the release of neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter here is glutamate. So in the dark, your rods will release glutamate, which bind to inhibitory receptors on the bipolar cell, this red cell right here. As the bipolar cell uh, has these neurotransmitters bind to these inhibitory receptors, these are going to be IPSPs, inhibitory postsynaptic potentials. So that's going to cause hyperpolarization of your bipolar cell, which is going to take it farther from threshold. Your bipolar cell will not be able to send a graded potential. The signal is going to stop right here. And because it's hyperpolarized, you're also not going to have these uh, voltage-gated calcium channels open never release neurotransmitter, you never release, uh, you never send on the signal to your ganglion cell. So no action potentials are sent, 
and your brain is not going to perceive light. And that makes sense. We are in the dark. No light should be perceived. No light is being sensed. We're in the dark. So how is this different in the light? Here is your rod. Light is being absorbed by retinal, so it's going to be in its trans conformation. That's going to activate that G protein system we just talked about, which is going to ultimately break down cyclic GMP, which will shut down that sodium ion channel. No more sodium is allowed in. So instead of depolarization, we see hyperpolarization of this rod. Because this rod is hyperpolarizing, it is not going to activate your voltage gated calcium channels, which means you will not get release of this neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is not released, you're not going to have it bind to the receptor on your bipolar cell, which means the bipolar cell is free to go about its normal activities because it is not being inhibited anymore. And what a bipolar cell likes to do is depolarize. If that rod is not clamping down and inhibiting that bipolar cell, then the bipolar cell is going to depolarize. That depolarization will result in these voltage-gated calcium channels opening, and that influx of calcium will cause release of neurotransmitter right here. Neurotransmitter can then bind to its receptors on the ganglion cell, and you can see the ganglion cells, these little lines right here, um, are they're staying for action potentials. These action potentials will travel down the axons of your ganglion cell and straight into your optic nerve. And then from optic nerve to optic chiasm, optic tract, all the way back to your visual cortex, way back in your occipital lobe. Uh, so I think of your rods as kind of clamps on your bipolar cells. They clamp down and inhibit your bipolar cells. Bipolar cells naturally want to depolarize. So in the dark, your rods are going to actively inhibit bipolar cells. So bipolar cells cannot send any signals. In the light, when retinal changes shape, you shut down the sodium channels, hyperpolarization, your rods are not going to be inhibiting your bipolar cell anymore. So it is free to depolarize. Uh, and as it depolarizes, you are going to stimulate ganglion cells to send action potentials. And just a reminder, your rods can send graded potentials, bipolar cells send graded potentials as well. Ganglion cells are the only cells that are capable of sending action potentials. So I hope that helps you.